Adhigan, good morning. Morning, Nikunj. Good to be here. You know, it's like an a, a early morning breakfast buffet. There is so much to pick and choose from. What should we start with? Uh, I think I think your favorite, uh, you know, maybe why are financials not performing uh, if, if that's not the... <laughs> I've given up on that now. Because they are not performing. <laughs> I've given up on that now. Diganth, you know, the only thing I can see now, this is just my personal observation, that when FIs are selling, they're selling financials. But when FIs are buying, Diganth, they are not buying financials. And just think about it. I mean, yesterday FIs were there. They bought Reliance. Last October, November, December, FIs came in. They are not buying uh, banks. So it is a very differentiated approach in which FIs are also now approaching financials. Yeah, I think uh, I think you're right. See, the last whole decade, uh, you know, there were so many FIs who just bought financials. So, you know, FIs have a big overweight on financials as it is. And, and if the sector does not do well for a long time, I think they are also humans like us. They'll also have pressure to perform. And, you know, slowly and steadily, they are shifting to other sectors, you know, be it a Reliance, be it, uh, you know, the ABB, Siemens, LNTs of the world. Uh, because at the end of the day, they also have to respond to what the markets are. And if you see Nikunj, you know, two things for financials, uh, you know, came as a sub negative surprise that, you know, RBI tightened the retail lending norms significantly two months back. And then, you know, you see this whole liquidity in the system getting tight. So I see that, you know, both of these measures are, you know, government's plan to ensure that inflation does not spike up before the elections. So, you know, till elections, you know, not much can be expected in financials. I think uh, you know, the glory time for financials, if at all it comes, it will be after elections. The large financials. Let's compare Bajaj Finance and HDFC Bank. Uh, two large lending institutions, but both have very different strategy, different growth numbers and different valuations. Yeah, so see, HDFC <clears throat> Bank has been, uh, like, you know, so much has been discussed about HDFC Bank, but... Uh, but, you know, we just have to understand that, uh, you know, the backdrop for HDFC is not so easy as it was in the last decade. Uh, see, last decade, 55% of the system, the PSU banks were not lending. ICICI axes were in NPA problems because of their corporate portfolio. So, HDFC Bank really had it easy in the last decade. Uh, this decade, if you see, they have to, you know, raise so much deposits to replace the HDFC limited uh, bonds and and then you know you have all the private and public sector banks everybody has good balance sheets so so i don't think hdfc is going to have it easy even after three six months uh, you know we can say that okay stock is the cheapest in the last 12 13 years and stuff but i still think there is a bit of grind in this stock uh, uh, you know that the finance you know the numbers and the investors have to go through uh, when it comes to bajaj finance i think uh, they are delivering on numbers uh, you know as uh, as anyone would like. But again, you know, five times, six times price to book. This is a market where, you know, there's time correction in such stocks. You know, you see the same thing happening for Chola as well. You know, they're delivering very well on numbers, but the stock does not go anywhere because five, six times earnings is something which people really don't want to pay in this market, you know, when a lot of other things are available. So I think Nikon Financials is now a bottom-up sector, not a top-down sector for at least a few quarters. Digant, hi, morning. Let's also get in your take then as to how you're uh, looking at Dr. Reddy's in terms of what the expectation is. It's a big set of numbers and we're expecting an uptake in the profits and the revenues. If you had to, you know, uh, map it out within the entire pharma space, where does Dr. Reddy stand? Anna, unfortunately, we don't track these uh, US generics. Uh, you know, this space is, you know, it's still not come into our radar because of the long struggle they had. Uh, so, so, you know, I'd really not be in a position to comment on Dr. Eddie's. Maybe we're getting your take on what the brokerage community is reacting to when it comes to ITC because the cigarette EBIT has been the slowest in several quarters. Across the board, uh, there seem to be pretty positive ratings still on um, uh, an ITC. How have you read into the quarterly performance? Yeah, so see, I think uh, cigarette benefited last year because everything opened up. In 2022 is when the physical economy opened up, 22, 23. And we have seen some high base which has been made for all the cigarette companies, uh, you know, be it uh, ITC uh, or be it Godfrey Philip. Uh, VST continues to lose market share here. So I think there is a three, six months of lull which we'll have to go through. And, and you know, once the budget does not have any tax increase for cigarettes, uh, you know, which I don't think should be the case, 
uh, i think they can you know again retweak their strategy and you know look at 2 to 4% kind of volume growth so i would just look at it as a temporary pause because of the high base that we have made in the last uh, 12 15 months uh, we continue to remain bullish on the cigarette space and godfrey philip is our preferred pick here uh, uh, because of the marlboro brand which they have and you know marlboro brand is the most premium cigarette that's are there in india marlboro they don't even own 1% market share digant marlboro right yeah they don't they don't have a large market share right i mean are they significant so marlboro has only 3% market share but nikun if you look globally uh, you know marlboro in the premium segment always has like you know a very large market share you know more than 30 40% you look at all the developed countries in india it's not the case because we all know that in godfrey philip there's a family dispute which has been going on for decades now and then you know when there is family dispute going on in the company you know the uh, you know the the attention on developing this marlboro brand has not happened so i see that as a big opportunity that marlboro is just 2 or 3% of india's market share i think it can easily go to 10% because uh, you know you look at the youth they want you know marlboro is an international brand you know they don't want a classic or a total or you know these kind of brands marlboro is what really works for them so i'm bullish on the long term story but obviously as i said you know the family feud is something we all have to live with in this stock 449 rupees for itc 52 we change very impressive other stock which we don't talk about i think is tata power what a run what a run it's been for tata power from diwali to new year i think it's been a dhamakedar stock dekhen which is the best power stock to buy i mean tata power is a play on energy and energy transition ntpc is a play on indians will consume more power and they have large capacity uh, i i think nikul you mentioned that uh, it's a breakfast buffet in the power sector so in the power sector you know there are these power generating companies okay the tata powers ntpcs nhpcs sjvns of the world uh, who are transitioning from a you know just a fossil fuel based power generation to the renewable and you know other sources of energy so there is a lot of excitement there but within this space what we really like the most is wires cables and transformers so they are you know like a proxy play on the power sector like you know if you have a solar plant it needs seven times the wiring of a normal thermal plant so we are playing this uh, through a pro- through these proxies the transformer companies and wire cable companies but i think uh, you know even even companies like uh, you know tata power nhpc or you know an engineers india a lot of these companies are going to play a very big role in this energy transition that india is going through so it's a very large buffet and uh, you know large investors can focus on the tata power and ntpcs and power grids of the world uh, you know mid and small cap investors can focus on the transformer or you know the wire cable sector 